Hi everyone, I'm excited to share a new idea with you today. I'll show you how to turn paragami into a functional piece of art that also works as an acoustic absorber. What you're about to see is just a prototype, so there are some imperfections. I rushed to get this video out and wasn't patient enough, and now I know I do a few things differently. If you want to avoid the mistakes I made, be sure to watch until the end. I'm confident that many of you will take this idea and perfect it. For this experiment, I created a brand new template inspired by sea corals. It has a very organic shape, and I'm hoping the ellipses in the design will blend nicely with the foam bubbles later on. As always, you can find the 3D model on my website at www.paragami.com. Now, I didn't create the full art piece, just a portion. I grouped the blocks in Rhino, which is my go-to software for design, but you can easily drag and drop the individual blocks and use the Arrange function in your slicer before generating G-codes. I'm using a Prusa MK3S with Prusa Slicer. You can group the blocks, move them around, and disable some for G-code generation. This design is support-free, so all you need to set is 5% infill, 2 perimeters, and 2 bottom layers are enough. I'm using PLA for this print. The blocks are arranged right to the edge. If you have the skirt enabled, you might get an error about the print area. You can safely ignore that or turn it off. The skirt is just a boundary line to verify bed calibration. Many of you ask about material usage, and it really depends on your printer and settings. For example, this group uses just 78 grams of filament. It is super lightweight since it's mostly hollow. After printing, I had to grind off the visible layer stepping on each block. Then I used a filler spray, which helps cover those lines and any small imperfections. If you want a flawless finish, sand it again and apply more filler spray if needed. I didn't go all out on that because I moved straight to spray painting it with a stone look paint. It hides the imperfections well. There's no special recommendation on the brand. I used different leftover paints, which gave each block a slightly different finish. Now let's talk about the foam. The key here is using construction foam that remains flexible and works for acoustic insulation. The best part? It also comes in white. There are several brands, but I've tested a few, and they all seem pretty similar. Just grab a low expansion foam from your local hardware store or go for the cheapest one online. Low expansion foam is important because you want small, tight bubbles. Filling the blocks with foam takes a little practice. It expands over time and can sometimes spill over the edges. It's no big deal if that happens, the surface dries first, so it doesn't fully stick and is easy to clean up later. Once the foam is set, it's time to trim the excess. I designed the blocks with flat tops, so just grab a knife and carefully cut away the surplus foam. It's easy to do. As you'll see, some blocks turned out perfectly, while others didn't fill all the way to the edges, or the bubbles in the center got too big, that's on me. I didn't wait long enough. That's my crucial recommendation. Be patient and let the foam fully harden overnight if possible. Even if it feels dry on the outside, the center might still be expanding. If you cut it too soon, not only will your knife get messy, but the foam might continue expanding, creating large bubbles. You'll end up with an uneven surface, so it's best to wait. Once the trimming is done, it's time to assemble the blocks. Print out the layout at full scale. You can do it on your home printer using the poster mode. This will split the layout into sheets that you can tape together. This design is more organic, so it doesn't follow a regular grid pattern. I 3D printed the numbered version, which made assembly much easier. The download package also includes a plain version, but trust me, the numbered one is a lifesaver. I wasn't thrilled with the foam flaws when I put it all together, so I tried to cover it with a layer of light stone paint. Hopefully, when making this absorber, you'll avoid these mistakes. Now let's prep the background. I picked up a chipboard from the hardware store, and they even cut it to size for me. Then I mixed a nice light beige color, and painted the board with a roller. Once it's dry, I attach the anchor rings. I wasn't about to redraw the layout onto the board, so I just started with the first line of blocks and went from there. I'm using Padex Transparent Glue. You can probably guess why Transparent Glue is the best option. So, that's the idea. What do you think? Do you have any suggestions for improving it? Drop a comment below so we can all learn from each other. Now, you might be wondering, does this upgrade work with previous designs? The answer is yes. I'll show you how to do it in the next video.